So this is the South Arm Pool in Richmond, British Columbia. Late October, the pool is shut down now for winter. It's an outdoor pool. And we've installed a 3,000 square foot power strip system on the flat roof using our commercial grade ballasted flat roof mounting system. Uh, it's fully approved for structural and seismic by a professional engineer. And what we have is four banks, really. So the water comes up and down here from the pump room. That's three inch CPVC inside the pump room. Uh, one bank over there on the lower roof in combination with this. So there's three banks that make up that one bank. Those three are in parallel. That's one bank. What we're standing on here is bank two in parallel. And that goes all the way out to here. This is where all the water comes together at the high point to return back through this three inch pipe. That's the return pipe. Look the extensive use of slip colors on our piping. This is a four inch piece of ABS or PVC uh, clamped to the footing so the three inch pipe can expand and contract the temperature without ripping the footings apart. A lot of movement with temperature on a solar heating system because there's a hundred degree temperature swing. Plastics over any length will move. 32 feet will move about two inches back and forth. So the feed side's over there. This is the third bay uh, up to Here, this is the third bank, teeing in, and the fourth bank is everything beyond this. So one, two, three, four banks in parallel, the water flows this way. Uh, this pipe goes uphill, and everything returns back to that common high point over there. Now what happens with the water flowing this way, you can see that there's high points and low points all over this roof, but it doesn't really matter much. We get away with a lot because what happens is we establish about a one or two PSI pressure drop across the entire system. We've got about 105 gallons a minute flowing through this, so we, we are establishing about one and a half PSI from the feed to the return site. So if you've got one and a half PSI, that's one and a half PSI every one of these tubes all the way along. Uh, and let's say you don't have flow. Let's say the water, let's say you have an air blockage in here anywhere. If there's an air blockage and there's no flow, well then there's no pressure drop. But if you have flow in the tube next to it, you have pressure drop because of the flow. So if water has a choice, where do I go? Where there's pressure drop or where there's no pressure drop, the water takes the easier path and goes where there's no flow. And that's the automatic balancing feedback mechanism that's at play here that means that you, you establish a little bit of a pressure drop and you can get away with panels up and down all over the place. You don't want more than uh, maybe a two foot elevation difference. A two foot elevation difference can be overcome by a one PSI pressure difference. Here we've got three or four inches easily overcome by the one PSI pressure drop. So this is our ballasted framework. These are uh, concrete patio stones. We've glued a little piece of power strip material underneath so that they don't uh, wear into the roof, dig into the roof, cause any damage. Uh, and it's just the weight of them all the way around the perimeter of this entire system. This is chain link fence top rail. You can also use electrical conduit. Uh, we've just done a little T connection here with a hose clamp and a piece of our plastic coated stainless steel strap. Uh, we've glued these plates which also have slip collars on them to uh, accommodate movement. Not that there is much with metal. Uh, here we've elevated this pipe. Didn't really have to elevate it all the way along here, but this way we can fill the whole system with water uh, at the start of the year. And we were able to test the system with water in it without having to actually run it. Uh, Unistrut, P4100, pre-galvanized. What else can I tell you? The uh, cross connections in the middle here are uh, 
just done with hose clamps and an electrical, what is that, an electrical conduit clamp. Uh, now notice we've run a glue strip every, maybe every, these spacings on the bars are about 10 feet, so we, we're trying to go every five or six feet, same as we do with normal panels. And we've used a, a two tube wide strip and we've run it underneath and glued it with mastic to the panel and that just keeps everything from uh, scattering around in the wind. Uh, the headers are attached at every rubber coupling connection and at the end, here we've used a hose clamp to make sure it doesn't pop off the end, a strap bracket and then a strap around there. Uh, so we're holding the headers at both ends. You can't do that with any other type of solar panel. If you hold the headers and prevent the panels from moving, contracting when they cool, you're going to rip anything apart with any other type of solar panel, including EPDM rubber, because the pull is too strong. But with our plastic-based material, you can get away with doing this, and it's really critical because it allows us to satisfy structural engineering considerations. You're holding the header pipes at both ends. It's a lot better than having to let one end free float. If you let one end free float, it's not a very secure installation. Uh, that's a great, unique, and very subtle advantage that the power strip system has. We employed it at the Minaru Aquatic Center on the uh, in this same city on the 45 degree tile roof. We held the top and the bottom, and that got us around structural considerations. Uh, structural engineering requirements. Now, now here, also, there's a seismic concern, which means if this whole building shakes, they don't want anything flying through the parapet and hurting anybody. Uh, so we had to uh, glue these uh, weights, these ballasts, just at the corners. So there's about 20 of them that are glued at the corners, and that just holds the whole thing from going anywhere in the event of a massive earthquake.